Making a good wedding photography timeline is so important to your success in capturing a wedding effectively. Spending a little time up front during the wedding planning process to ensure that you have enough time for all the different photos you would like and that you have a good plan will help you so much. I'm Nicole and I'm a wedding photographer in Toronto. I've been photographing weddings for the past 10 years and I've seen what can go right and what can go wrong on a wedding day. Before I get started, if you would like my free wedding photography timeline guide, there is a link in the description. In the guide, I've included a sample timeline and all the things you need to think about when you are making a photography timeline. This is a great sample to have and you can use it immediately, so please just go ahead and grab it. If you're new to photography, making a good photography timeline can be intimidating, but there are some rules of thumb that I use for every wedding. At the same time, each wedding is different, so in each case you need to communicate well with the couple beforehand so that you can come up with a, a great plan for the photography. I find that most of my clients need about 8 to 10 hours of photography, and that generally covers the getting ready photos until just after the dance floor opens up. Some clients will need fewer hours and some will need more hours than that, so it really depends on their individual plans. I like to start communicating about the timeline at the initial meeting that I have with clients. I'll talk to them about their wedding day, what they expect will happen, and I will come up with a rough draft timeline that I will jot down. And then after their meeting, the following day, I'll summarize that in an email and I will send it to them so that they have a copy. If a couple has a wedding planner, that is great. Wedding planners specialize in making a wedding day run smoothly. And if they have one, it will definitely help you as the photographer. Just make sure to communicate with the couple as well as the planner when you're establishing the timeline for photography. If there is no planner, if you're just starting out in wedding photography, you likely will not have a planner and it will be up to you, the photographer, to be able to communicate the importance of a, a good timeline with the couple. When you're making the timeline, you want to make sure you have enough time to capture all the photos that a couple would expect so that at the end of the day, the couple will be happy with the photos that you take and they'll have a gallery full of beautiful images. The couple has likely never had a wedding before, so they will be looking to you for guidance on this. And it's in your best interest to get a good timeline nailed down early on in the process so that the couple can proceed with planning their wedding and they'll have like a guideline of what is going to be happening during the day. When I first meet with a couple, I always find out their wedding date and then I Google the time the sun will set on their wedding. I like to know this because after the sun sets, obviously there will be no available light. So outdoor photos really will be a lot trickier after sunset. I write this down and I mention the sunset time to the client so that we all have an idea of when that's gonna be. Where I live in Toronto, Ontario, the sun sets really early in the fall and winter. If a couple is getting married in November, for example, the sun could set as early as 5 p.m. And if the couple has a ceremony planned for 4.30 p.m. and is expected to finish that at 5 p.m., there will not be any more available light left for portraits. It's good to know this early on when talking to the couple because if there's no available light after the ceremony, you could recommend that the couple do a first look before the ceremony. If the couple does a first look and does the photos earlier on in the day, they could take their bride and groom photos, their bridal party photos, and their family photos before the ceremony and take advantage of the natural light. Also, when I meet with a couple, I always ask when the ceremony time will be. Usually the couple already has established their ceremony time by the time they meet with me. And once I know the ceremony time, I can plan the photos around that ceremony time. I like to request the following amounts of time for photos. For getting ready photos, I like to have at least one hour. For a first look, I like to plan to have at least 15 minutes for the couple to meet up and interact with each other. For bride and groom photos, I recommend half an hour. Same goes for bridal party photos, half an hour for that. And for immediate family photos, I request at least half an hour. 
This is a minimum amount of time and I always talk to couples a little bit more about what their exact plans are going to be. For example, if they have a huge extended family, I would recommend adding extra time to capture family photos. With the getting ready, I usually recommend the following amounts of time. So after I arrive, I usually start shooting details for about 20 minutes. And then 20 minutes after that is usually bride getting into the dress. And then the final 20 minutes is bridesmaids or group photos, uh, mom and dad are there. I would get family photos as well. Throughout this time, I would also be capturing any like candid moments that would be happening. If there are other events that are gonna be happening, I would recommend more time during the getting ready. If for example, the bridesmaids will be starting out wearing matching robes, I know that's a big trend that's been happening over the past few years. And it looks really cute, but it does take extra time just to get those group photos. So I would recommend extra time for that. Also, if the couple is planning on doing a letter reading and gift exchange before the ceremony, I would add a little bit extra time for that. I also always let the bride know that when I arrive at the house on the morning of the wedding, it's nice if the bride and bridesmaids can all be just about finished their makeup. So when I arrive, it's nice to have the bride just getting the finishing touches on her makeup done. After the getting ready, I usually encourage my couples to do a first look. And then for a first look, I usually allocate about 15 minutes, which I find is just enough time for the couple to meet up, to see each other and, you know, take it all in. Usually at the first look, the wedding party is there already. So after the couple has seen each other and had a moment alone, I ask the wedding party to join in. And then I take wedding party photos, which I allocate usually about half an hour for that. However, if it is an extra large wedding party, or there's something special about the wedding party photos, I would add extra time for that as well. Once I'm done with the wedding party photos, I usually tell the wedding party they can relax and then the bride and groom, I will take their photos and I like to allocate at least half an hour for that if possible. Once we finish all the photos, we head to the ceremony location. It's nice to be able to arrive at the ceremony at least a half hour before the ceremony starts so that the couple has time to relax and gather their thoughts before the ceremony. I find a typical ceremony usually lasts about 30 minutes, but this varies. Of course, if it's a Catholic ceremony, it would be longer. Just make sure you talk to the couple about anything special that will be happening, happening during their ceremony and um, the approximate time the ceremony should take. I like to take family photos immediately after the ceremony. I find it's a good time because the family is there. They're all fresh and I usually take about half an hour for family photos. I always make sure I'm prepared for family photos. So before the, the wedding day, I communicate with the bride and groom and come up with a list for family photos so that we can go through the family photos and complete them quickly. After family photos are finished, we all head to the reception and I usually start photographing the decor. Usually at that point, the reception room is empty and usually people are having cocktails in a separate room. So it's nice to take decor photos at that point when no one has laid down their coats or jackets or, or purses or anything. So I usually focus on the decor and my second photographer takes candid photos of the reception. And then if there's enough time, I'll swap with the second photographer. I'll, I'll take photos of the cocktail hour and my second will do photos of decor. I also always have a note indicating what time to expect sunset. And if the couple's interested, I will come up to them about you know, 15, 20 minutes before the sun is going to set and ask them if they'd like to go outside for a few outdoor portraits while the sun is setting. And I usually stay with my second photographer until just after the dance floor opens. I find that it's nice to have maybe you know 20 minutes of photography coverage of the dance floor. After that point, it gets a little bit repetitive unless there is something special that's going to be happening. And usually the dance floor opens up sometime around 9 or 9.30. So I find that it's nice if I can stay until about 10 p.m. I find these are good guidelines. However, sometimes things don't go as planned. Sometimes things will run late. That happens often. And in that case, it's nice to have a little bit of buffer in between the various parts of the day just to account for something happening. So that's a quick summary of how I go about planning a wedding photography timeline. Communicating with your clients is so important. 
and just making sure you're aware and you're prepared will help you be able to take great photos that everyone is happy with. If you'd like more information on how to plan a good wedding photography timeline, you can find my PDF file if you just click in the description below. And you're welcome to use that however you would like. I hope it's helpful. If you like this video, please hit the like button and I would love it if you would subscribe. Thank you for watching.